lot of the large corporations, especially in the financial services world or in engineering or consulting, mm -hmm. um, they have the money to pay our students yeah. uh, a good stipend. And what about some of the smaller startups or the nonprofits? How do you work at facilitating internships uh, to those sites for students that have, uh, uh, you know, corresponding interest? And, and what do you do in terms of stipends, especially in some expensive cities around the world? Now, there's, there's two points that I would share related to that, Lou. The first one is some of these smaller organizations, organizations that don't have as many financial resources, they're not the ones who are going to be coming to a career fair. Mm -hmm. We're seeing more of them participate in virtual fairs because the cost barrier is much lower. There's yeah. no travel expenses associated with it. So what we had to do internally within the Career Center staff is figure out if they don't come to career fairs, we want to share this information with students. How do we get more information in their hands that is going to be directly pertainable to them where mm -hmm. they would see themselves in this organization? So what we did is not in addition to the check-in survey due in January, in September, we also administer what we call a summer experience survey where we said, hey, please tell us what you did this past summer, mm -hmm. June, July. Did you study abroad? Did you travel? Did you have an internship? Did you do service work? Were you training for varsity athletics? Were you um, serving in the military and doing basic training? And what we've done is we've compiled over three years, 7,000 different internships. And we have this in an interactive database that's available for all of our Notre Dame students, password protected, where they can say, here's what I'm studying. What different organizations did students who were in my major or my class year, what did they do last year or the year mm -hmm. before? So it gives them ideas. Mm -hmm. And the second part of this that you mentioned is the pay. And for many organizations, they are recognizing now internships shouldn't be free labor. But there are some organizations that do have financial restrictions or maybe they're paying minimum wage, but they are in a high cost of living city like New York or San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So this is where our benefactors have really stepped up. And we actually manage a number of what we call internship funds. Mm -hmm. So students who have demonstrated financial need and they say, I'd really love to do this internship, but... I can't make it work financially. We have a very simple application process. They come to us. We have a number of benefactors who said, I want to help students in the College of Arts and Letters. I want to help students who want to be in California. Right. And we actually have a number of alums, including Matt DeSalvo. So Matt, if you're out there, thank you so much, who said, do what you need with this money to give students experiences. Yeah. So these funds are allocated to students based on need, and it's not income replacement. Essentially, these funds help with food, transportation, and housing. So mm -hmm. how can I have money to survive and thrive and actually get this experience? And there's a lot of colleges and universities that are starting to do more in this internship funding. We've been doing it through a number of years, thanks to a lot of supporters. 